I've been traveling for over 10 years, studying, watching the game. In my wildest dreams, I could not have pictured that this sport in this city would show me everything it had to offer, everything I had hoped to see. It's a special, special atmosphere, impossible to put into words. What I can put into words, however, and one thing that is certain, is every New Yorker got a hooper in them. A hooper is somebody that, you know, they can play the game. What? basketball player, to me, is somebody that knows the nuances of the game. They can adapt the game to being overly coached, to playing in Europe, to being able to play college level uh, or NBA level. <laughs> My name is Anthony Mejia. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. My name is Darian Charlemagne. I'm from the Bronx, New York. My name is Amaro, uh, from New York City. I was born in Germany, but raised in New York City. I'm Devon Woodard. I'm from Motown, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, my name is John Hawthorne. I'm from Harlem, New York. I'm from Germany. Um, I grew up in Iserlohn. Uh, my name is Jared Reed. I'm from Long Island, New York. Freeport represent, yeah. <laughs> Why the hell do you guys say first the borough, then the city? Growing in the city, I think it's always because it's never just the city. You got to represent where exactly where you're from so they know because everybody's different. Hooper is just somebody that's been around the game like a long time. Like, I, I mean, like they just experience basketball. Like New York is mecca of basketball. Like everybody plays it. Everybody's participating in basketball. So we got to, if you don't come to play, it's shoot, you, you dead out here. New York designed some very special basketball players and people. <laughs> everybody, every Hooper is different. Different style of play. Some can play more robotic, some can play like fluid, you know, just so smooth. Everybody, they kind of tell a story. Every Hooper tells a story by the way they play. I got a question for you. Do you know the difference between a basketball player and a Hooper? Is there even a difference? What decides whether you are one or the other? A Hooper, that's a term reserved only for the most special basketball talent. Or is it simply a term to describe somebody that plays the game of basketball? Yeah, I'm going
Oh, give me that. Oh, okay. Boom. You took my last. Oh, 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 We want to take you on a new journey, not to talk about old tales and stories, but rather show you what New York is like in the present, in the here and now. Is someone that has a feel for the game. Feel for the game, understands the game at a different IQ level. I'm a hooper, don't let the fast shit fool you though. <laughs> well, first of all, like someone who just go with the rock, the basketball. New York City was known for having guys that are hoopers. And when basketball players break down, when, they're, when you're scouted to run your play and you can't really get it off the pass and the cut, we had a guy who could get his off the bounce, be able to break the play a little bit and get his. And that's very different from just a basketball player. A basketball player is somebody that can just, you know, go in and out of the game once every two months and take breaks. A hooper is somebody that's addicted. So are you a hooper? Oh, I'm addicted, man, yeah. I love the game. I'm a hooper, I'm a hooper, because I'm different from everybody else. I have my own style of play, talk the talk, you know, walk the walk, all that, all that good stuff. The city really is a small world of its own, its own social ecosystem, if you will. It doesn't matter where you go, how many blocks you travel in this concrete jungle. It seems as if basketball courts will find you in all five boroughs. It's as if the city was trying to tell you, we are basketball. the Brooklyn courts a couple times to play and it's just always been fun I would say like there there have been a couple moments like playing against guys on the courts and you step on the court and they're like oh you're a girl are you sure you want to play with us and it's like yeah <laughs> and then once they realize that I can hoop it's like she good <laughs>
Yeah, I think I think it's rare, like you said, to see altercations on a basketball court. Of course, it happens, but I think the reason why it's so peaceful is because this is like a way for people to escape, and like people understand that what happens on the court, it stays on the court. It's not personal. So you can talk trash, say some of the meanest things, and to an outsider, it might sound like yo, these guys are about to fight. But then you'll see those people hug and and dap up after the game, and it's all love. <laughs> When you listen closely, you can hear its mystique. Hear the myths, the legends, the ones that built its hoop culture. No city with this much flash can say that it simultaneously embodies the grit and grind culture, just like New York can. The sport is respected, is celebrated here. Everything is left out on that court. Because if there's one thing that New Yorkers don't tolerate, it's losing. The energy is unmatched. If you go to any park in the city, Dykeman, Rucker, West Fourth, Hoops in the Sun, I mean, Pro City, it doesn't matter. I think my favorite park to play in uh, is definitely the Grand Street Courts in Chinatown. Um, that's just where I grew up playing. Um, so that's my personal favorite just because it feels like home. But I think the most competitive one that I'm at uh, when I come here is definitely West Fourth. I spend a lot of time there as well. Uh, it's a great court, great guys out there. So I think those are the two that I would probably put up there. between a hooper and a basketball player. And when asking that question in New York, another thing became very clear. In this city, everybody is a hooper. And it doesn't matter where you play, what you've accomplished. All your accolades, all your accomplishments, they're void once you step on a New York City basketball court. And if you can't prove it here, all that isn't worth anything. And they'll let you know. When I play three on three, 
Maybe I'm more a hooper than a basketball player, but playing five on five, I'm more of a basketball player. I'm a hooper, absolutely, absolutely. Anytime that ball's in my hand, I want goal. Get in that basket. Everyone else around me, they don't matter. You know, everyone will say they're a hooper. The lights, when they come on, you see who the real hoopers are, you know? Hooper is more of a player that is just more free spirit, I guess you can say. They don't really play well in a role or within the system. And I'm not knocking that. There are a lot of talented hoopers out there. Over the years, there's been a shift. A lot of what used to happen outdoors has become much more professional. It's moved on to the indoor courts. However, it doesn't mean that blacktop culture has gone extinct. On the contrary, it's gotten a brand new look. The change in culture has highlighted that. It's just more organized now, right? Like everyone does things on their phone. So the kids are set up and wired for more structure. Oh. Everything's organized for them. Everything is uh, sheltered and, and, and confined and dictated for them. Riverside Church has a luxurious, rich history, man. Going back, program started in the 60s, I believe. So all the way from the 60s up until now, you have Ron Artest, Lamar Odom, Eric Barkley, Elton Brand, Stephon Marbury, uh, oh, you played Ron me? Strickland. Oh. It's just so many, so many, so many, so many greats uh, throughout the time, you know, all the way into my era. Yeah, it's just so many legendary basketball players. James Naismith, founder and inventor of the game of basketball. He probably didn't envision it looking anything like it does today. New York took that game of basketball the way it was and gave it a real hip hop edge, a complete makeover, if you will. The swagger, the confidence. If you're quiet like a church mouse, you don't belong on this court. The flash, the style, 
I'll go as far as to say this game would not be what it is today without New York's heavy influence on the game. It's good etiquette here to say, we run this, we are the best in the world. To a New Yorker, it's not brash. It would be an insult not to think like that. The cocky confidence of a New Yorker is the first giveaway sign where they're from. The walk, the aura, the determined look in their eyes. Confidence is always on 300. Um, I would say a little bit, but I think the basketball, like more basketball player than a hooper. But if someone pisses me off, like I can get to a hooper real quick, yeah. There's a great mix now of European basketball and like hooping. Um, I think just the shot ability to knock shots down is like something we got from the States. I think like all these moves, like you can see in the EuroLeague, these one-on-one -on -one actions and everything, I can, I would say like they're, they're from New York or like from the, from hoopers. Um, so yeah, I think the NBA, there are a lot of hoopers, um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one actions, a lot of crazy moves. Um, I think you could see, like you could see them first in the streets maybe or like on, on like open runs. Unfortunately, the, the Raka is not that um, famous anymore in general tournaments. What do you think is that? Is am I missing? Do you know, does I miss something or? No. Uh, again, like you said, to start right, everything. Number one, everything changes. So, they're historically, they moved into a historic place to where it's just not prominent at the moment. While it's widely known as the Mecca, not everybody was able to tell me why the city got its nickname and where it came from. It looks nothing like the real city Mecca which is the most holy place of Islam. No desert, and most definitely not a place where you show respect or gratitude to one another. And while the entire city refers to it as the Mecca, plenty of New Yorkers have no idea why and how it got its nickname. What they do know, and what New York is, with every fiber of its existence, is a place where any hooper, no matter where they're from, has to have played at least once in their life. everything started there? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I couldn't give you the actual answer, and if I tried, I probably would sound 
<laughs> like I don't know what I'm talking about, but no, I actually don't. No. You have no idea. I mean, you told me, but no. <laughs> Before I didn't know. I think the reason they call it the Mecca is because it's the absolute, absolute focal point of basketball, like globally. If you just look at how basketball is celebrated here, it's not celebrated like that anywhere else in the world. Like this is the center of basketball. And so no matter where you're from, what city you're from, I think other cities can definitely compete with New York, no question, but just the, the culture and the, the, the swagger and the energy that New York brings, people take bits and pieces everywhere and, and are inspired by it, so. After being here, I understand why people want to be here because it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare to any location. I mean, you have, you could be a 20 year old playing against somebody that's 12, they just have the confidence of like, they're Michael Jordan, like I'm doing my thing. You can't mess with me. You cannot mess with me. And I've never had that experience anywhere else. And it'd be kids that really know, you know, how to handle the ball, how to shoot. And it's, it's an amazing place to play the game. Oh, um, I think we bring a little swag to it. I, I feel like it's it's a different feel out here. Like everybody can put, like most people play basketball here, so it's a it's a different feel. Yes, well, especially being out in Germany, I felt like while you know just playing out there, it feels like we were looked at as like oh like no these are hoopers like they re they're from oh they're from New York like we gotta take them serious or they're automatically better. That person over there in Germany could have been better than me, but automatically just me being from New York, they, they expect, you know, to just breed like hoops, basketball. So again, I ask, what is a hooper? If you'd ask a pro, the answer will differ from those who don't play the sport professionally. They live the game, but do so differently. To me, a hooper uh, is somebody that lives the game of basketball. So that means you think about it 24 seven, you go hoop whenever, wherever, if you have your sneakers or not, no matter what the ball looks like, any court, any condition, no excuses, you just want to play the game. It doesn't matter where, and you can compete and excel anywhere. Yeah, for me, a basketball player is someone who is a uh, Fundamentally sound at all levels, right? Should be a three-level scorer. To me, that's fundamental. Anybody who plays basketball should be able to shoot or score on all three levels. That's to the basket, that's in the mid-range, that's behind the three-point line. But now with the training element and how kids are forced into training all day, now we just have a bunch of guys who can get their own shot but they cannot play basketball. They don't know how to play basketball. They don't know how to cut. They don't know spacing. They don't know fundamentals of the basketball. They don't know it. They just know how to create for themselves. If you ask me, a true basketball player can only become a basketball player if there's a hooper in him. If you can't be dropped on any court in the world, Find a way to get a bucket, get that assist, get that defensive stop. Despite not having a system to run or rely on, a coach to tell you what to do, then I got bad news for you. If you can't be a hooper when a time comes where it's needed, you will never be a real basketball player.
I'm good, I'm good.